the adrenals get a workout? <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Okay, so this morning, um, we're going to show a little love to our kidneys and our adrenals. Do you have any idea what your kidneys do 24 seven? They filter between 45 and 50 gallons of blood to get the waste out 24 seven every day without your help. Now, having said that, we should help them a little bit by drinking water. So, you know, I know some people and sipping it. Are we good? Okay, then stop talking. <laughs> my tech guy. Oh, he's going to sip some water. Good. <laughs> right. So, but beyond that, um, you know, it does more than that. It, it, and it balances body fluids. And in the body fluids, of course, are all the nutrients and the minerals. So it's a big deal. It's not a small thing. You all know you have two kidneys in your back. Um, it also helps to regulate blood pressure. And because it manages your bodily fluids, it's ultimately important to your overall general health that your kidneys are functioning. And I don't think that could be lost on anyone. Um, the health of your bones, your joints, and reproductive organs, whether you're using them or not. We like to keep them in good shape. So um, according to traditional Chinese medicine, a balanced kidney um, manifests in having wisdom and trusting yourself. Um, also the ability to deal with stress and let go. So obviously an unbalanced kidney meridian means we don't trust ourselves or we um, exhibit a lot of fear in life of the other shoe dropping um, and sometimes just the inability to let go. And sometimes just exhaling is a way for us to let go because often we are holding our breath and we don't even realize it. So we're going to start and then I'm going to talk about um, about uh, the adrenals in a moment. But, um, you know, and physically, if we have swollen ankles, any of your joints, if they're swollen, that can be an issue of lack of kidney function. But come on over on to all four, even itchy skin, tiredness, insomnia. Now, cat cow, we do it frequently. But the amazing thing is, it is such a basic and yet enormously beneficial uh, posture. Now, if it turns out that your wrists or your um, shoulders or anything take a hit, I mean, I have two unidentical, but I just want to remind you of this. If your wrists are sore, you can always do your cat-cow with your forearms on a couple of blocks. Obviously, they should be even blocks. Um, so with your hands underneath your wrists underneath your shoulders you're going to focus on you know tucking your tailbone and rounding your spine and releasing your neck not so much pulling your chin into your chest as much as just releasing it so we're going to articulate the spine and really let the body warm up here on an exhale so you're rounding your spine you're dropping and tucking your tailbone and just release your neck and your head just let it go and then on an inhale you can curl your toes under this is a nice little toe stretch as you hollow out your lower back and lift through the heart center and lengthen through your neck lifting your head and exhale round your spine now because of the location of your kidneys and your adrenals, they're getting a little extra blood supply and circulation here as we round the exact area where the adrenals and kidneys lie. And then curl your toes under, hollow out your lower back. And this is a co gentle compression. So when we compress any organ or gland of the body, we help it purge itself of the waste and then as we inhale or exhale, we stretch as we round our spine. So there are so many benefits here with your basic little cat cow. And that's why it's included in so many classes. Once again, inhale, curl your toes under if it feels good, hollowing out your lower back, compressing the area of the kidneys, lifting the head, and again, exhale. Mm. 
We're flexing the spine, articulating, decompressing the spine on the stretch. And then inhale, and, yeah, inhale to hollow out. This is where we articulate the spine. So the benefits are enormous. It's also calming to your system. It helps to balance the parasympathetic nervous system, exhaling with the sympathetic. And of course, this is where the adrenals come in because the adrenals are your glands that activate your body by spewing out hormones like adrenaline and noradrenaline, sometimes they're called epinephrine and norepinephrine. And again, you're gonna curl your toes under, hollow out your lower back. So when we're you know, feeling a lot of stress, there's a number of tools in your yoga toolbox. This is one of them. And of course, coordinating your breathing with rounding your spine, And last inhale as you hollow out your lower back and lengthen. And then return to neutral. So by coordinating the breathing with the movement, this has an overall calming effect of the body and the mind. Spread your knees wide apart. Flatten the tops of your feet, your big toes are together and Slowly take your hips back towards your heels. Remember, if bending your knees like this is too much or you need cushioning under your knees, either double your mat over if you're at home, you grab a little blanket, a little throw, put it underneath your shins, your knees, and just breathe. Releasing your forehead to the floor, or if you need height, you can place your forehead on a block or fold your arms and create a pillow with your forearms. Breathing into your side and your back ribs. Inhale, come on up. And sitting, starting in Virashana, hero's pose with your knees bent, we're gonna do um, something called swan. And it's really just really nourishing for your adrenals. So basically you're tucking your chin, placing your hands in front of you, and then rounding the back, lifting up, and then returning your hips back to your heels, coming back to hero. So it's just a little sort of, you know, something like an animal stretch, but I don't even know if I've ever seen a swan do this, but starting in hero, drop your chin towards your chest, roll your spine as you round it, come forward and bring your hands forward and then pressing up, round your spine, release your hips, and straighten your spine. Inhale, exhale, drop your chin towards the center of your chest. Let your shoulders collapse in front as you slowly drag your hands out in front, keeping your torso low, and then reaching up and basically just moving your spine in a way that feels nourishing. Straighten the body up again. Exhale, drop your chin, round your spine. Let your shoulders roll forward. Bring your hands onto your mat, nice and low. And then draw the torso up and round your spine, bring your hands back beside your body, lengthen, 
exhale, drop your chin, round your spine, let your shoulders roll forward. Come down nice and low with your face towards the mat, pressing up and bring your hips back towards your heels, coming back into Varasana. And then come on over onto your backs. Our supine twists and draw your knees in towards your chest and just gently roll from side to side, stretching out the lower back. This is also incredibly nourishing and supportive for your adrenals and your kidneys. Now I want to offer you two choices here. You can, we can try both and see which one we want to do. Keep your knees bent at a 90, deg 40, a 90 degree angle to your torso. Your arms are out at shoulder height. Inhaling in place. Exhale, drop both knees over to the left, head to the right. Keep your right shoulder on the mat. So when we stretch this way, we give a little stretch to the liver. That's a whole other topic. Inhale, bring your knees and your head back to center. Exhale, releasing both knees together to the right, head to the left, and your left shoulder stays on the floor. Inhaling, come back to center. And then extend your left leg down in front. Bring your left hand to the outside of your right knee and draw it across your body over to the left. So either one of these twists will accomplish some of the same things. The one we did previously will work your core more. It'll work your obliques, uh, both external and internal, the muscles that wrap around your waist, involved in twisting and bending. But of course, in this stretch, we're getting a little more release in the glutes, the hips, the thighs, the IT band. Inhaling, come back to center. Draw that right knee into your chest. Bring your left knee up to your chest. Release and straighten your right leg down in front. And with your right hand on the outside of your left knee, draw it across your body. Extending your left arm out to the side, bringing that left knee over to the right side. Yin yoga, as opposed to yang, yin is a little slower. It's, it's less stress for the body. I mean, if we're feeling really stressed out, yeah, you can do some high aerobic exercise, but it, it has a, a type of release for the body, but it can also stress out your adrenals and your kidneys. So we need to be respectful, thoughtful, mindful about what's really going to nourish these really important glands that are producing hormones that govern so many of our bodily functions without us even being aware of it. And then draw that knee back to the center, pull it tight into your chest, Bring your right knee up, glue those knees together. Once again, your thighs are 90 degrees to your torso. Your arms are out at shoulder height, pressing the small of your back into the floor. This also helps to ground and nourish kidneys and adrenals. And one more time, drop both knees together over to your left. Turn your head to the right. Now, if you wish, you can take your 
left hand and just place it on top of your right thigh. So left hand on top of right thigh. Your knees are on the left. So this is stretching kidneys and adrenals, bringing extra blood supply to this area when we stretch. And then release your left arm back out to the left side. Keep your knees, feet, thighs together. As you inhale, bringing them back to the center, rolling onto your back, and then release both bent knees over to the right. And let your feet rest on the ground and bring your right hand onto your left thigh. And breathe. So a yang style of yoga would be like a power yoga, be a fast vinyasa. They're all good, but what's best for us at any particular given time on any given day is basically tuning in to what our body needs and trusting that you have the wisdom you may be lacking in the discipline. We all do from time to time because there's so much going on. However, if we're going to enjoy what's going on in life, we need to take care of ourselves so that we can be rested, relaxed, and present. That's your greatest gift to yourself and anybody else. And then release that arm and coming back into the center, draw both knees in towards your chest, one hand on each knee. With your knees pulled in really close, do a little bit of rocking from side to side. Ah. And with your hands underneath the backs of your thighs, or if you want to roll over onto your side, your choice, bring yourself up to a seated position. Now this is where you may want to use your blocks. We're gonna practice something called dragonfly. And it's a forward fold, it's a forward bend. So for many of us, forward bends are mm, challenging. Let's say that, challenging. Pull the flesh out from underneath your sits bones. Just sitting up straight can be challenging. And flex your feet. But this is where you may wish to use your blocks to build up a little bit of um, height. So have them at the ready. So sitting up nice and tall, just feel this, your stretch on your adductor, inner thigh muscles. Now, this is also a grounding posture when we, I think in our next session, I think I want to spend a little bit of time talking about our chakras because um, even though like the breath, you can't see it unless it's cold out or you're, uh, but, or you sneeze and you see all that moisture come out, but basically we can't see the breath, nor can we see chakras. But, um, and even if we didn't talk about chakras, energy is what we're made out of. And different kinds of energy manifest in different areas of the body. So suffice to say that this particular posture, whenever we're sitting on the ground, it helps to balance our root chakra. And from the root is where we start to feel some security in the world and connection to the earth. So inhaling, lift and lengthen your chest, axial extension, reaching up through the crown, then sweep your arms up, Exhale, just forward fold into the center, whatever amount you can. Don't go for gold here, just go for silver. Okay, so you're reaching and stretching. You're gonna feel this in your inner groin, your adductors, you're gonna feel this in your hams. You might even be feeling it in your lower back, so be very mindful. Then release your hands to the floor. 
and walk your hands back towards the center of your body and press yourself back up. So just to warm up the lower back. So you're sitting up nice and tall. Now, it can be very helpful if, you know, a friend of mine might be selling her um, yoga um, accessories. I'm gonna see about it because it'd be great. If you're up a little bit higher, we don't have these things, but if you put a little cushion or you rolled your mat up, mat up and you lift your hips up, it's a little bit easier to fold forward. So let's once again, flex the feet, inhale, sweep the arms up, reach up through the crown, lifting up, reaching up. Now exhale, let's fold again. And at this point, might you be able to, with your peace fingers, grab your big toes? No, some of us can't. Okay, so now what you're gonna grab, you could bend your leg, bend your knees. That's an option, or you take hold of your ankles. That's the other option. Now, basically, I'd like you to try to keep your spine as long as you can. And then imagine pressing your heart center towards the floor. You don't need to go very far to get the nourishment and the stretch here through the kidneys and through the adrenals. But this forward folding, any forward folding, stimulates the function of the liver, the spleen, the kidneys, as well as the um, urinary bladder meridian. So as much as this may feel difficult and challenging, just know you're deriving huge benefits, worth the effort. Once again, release your hands, bring them in front, push the floor away from you, walk back up and release. How about that? Feels good, doesn't it? <laughs> so just sitting nice and tall. I'm going to try this just one more time. So the blocks, if you wanted to, you could be resting because I'd like you to hold a little bit. So yin yoga is nourishing to release the stress from the body, to calm the mind. So you can make something like this with your blocks if you like. So once again, flex your feet, feel your sits bones, yeah, it takes a lot of core to sit up straight, which is something we don't often do. We just kind of sit in a chair and we turn into something like an amoeba. Well, the stronger your core is, the easier it will be to sit up straight. Inhale, sweep the arms up, reach up, stretch up. Lengthen, lift, and reach forward. You're bending from your hips, reaching. And again, if you can take hold, either with your peace fingers, your toe, maybe you can reach the outsides of your feet. And then, as I said, if you wish to build some height with your blocks, or if you're at home, firm cushions, if you don't have blocks, maybe Santa could bring you some blocks this year. And just breathe, find, a place where you can hold for about 60 seconds. Lengthening your spine. Releasing and letting go. Keep flexing your feet. Ten more seconds. And that will do. Bring your hands into the center and use your hands to press yourself back up. Bring your legs together and bang out the backs of your knees. 
twist positions are brilliant for your kidneys and your adrenals. So now you're probably finding it a lot easier to sit up taller. Yes, pull your flesh away from your sits bones once again. So pull the flesh if you've got some there and press your shoulders back. Bring your left foot to the outside of your right knee. Interlock your fingers two inches below the knee and pull your torso towards your thigh. So you can actually feel it pressing up against. Bring your right hand behind you. Inhale the left, hang on a second. Sorry guys, I got wrong. I'm trying to do the mirror image. <laughs> so place your left hand behind you. Inhale right up. Exhale, twist and turn, either bringing elbow to the outside of your knee or wrapping your inner elbow around your knee. Inhale, sit up nice and tall. Exhale, twisting, starting from the bottom, working your way up your spinal column. So because the kidneys are the filter of the blood, the filtering system, as I said, like 200 liters a day, every day, 365 days of the year, your kidneys are filtering 45 to 50 gallons, 200 liters of blood. It does help to drink water, sipping it throughout the day. But this twisting position also helps the body rid itself of toxins and waste. And of course, keeps your spine supple, youthful, enervated, rejuvenated. Inhale, lengthen up through your crown. Exhale, release and twist to the other side and return to the center and unfold the bent leg and maybe bang out both of your legs once again. Now place your right foot outside of your left knee. Interlock your fingers two inches below, pull your torso towards your chest, feel your belly, flex the foot of the straight leg. Make sure the other foot is as flat on the floor as possible. Place your left hand behind, right hand behind you. Inhale the left up. Exhale, twist and turn, either bringing the elbow to the outside of your knee or the inner elbow around the knee, whichever feels best for your shoulder. And then inhale to lengthen. Exhale, twisting whatever amount you can. So any twists and compressions, wherever they're taking place, are assisting the body in removing waste, toxins, and impurities. Super important for your health. Otherwise, the impurities can spread, or, and it can make your energy, your blood flow stagnant, blocked, and you wonder why you feel tired, irritable, just generally not the best you can feel. So yoga is doing, and twist positions are really one of your best friends in terms of keeping so many of your bodily functions, your joints, and particularly your spine in great shape. Inhaling to lengthen. Exhale, release and counter twist. And coming back into the center, fold your legs to the side. We're gonna practice gate pose, a parigrasana. Now, if you need cushioning for your knees, there are pads back there 
or you fold your, uh, your um, mat, double it over. So taking, I'll do the mirror again, take your right leg out to the side. Inhale, sweep the arms up. Exhale sideways towards the straight leg, lowering your right hand onto your right leg and reaching with your left arm up and over. So you may be able to slide your right hand down your leg. As you breathe. Inhale, reach the top arm up. Exhale, lower the arm to the floor. Now we're going to come into a balance. You're going to lift your leg off the floor and reach the top arm over your head. Stretching both kidneys and the adrenals, I should have said maybe earlier, they're perched on top of your kidneys. And release that foot to the floor and tuck it back under, and let's go for the other side. Inhale, sweeping up. Exhale, sideways, reaching your left hand to your left leg and your right arm bending sideways. And looky there, the sun is shining on us. Inhale, reach this arm up. Exhale, plant the palm on the floor. Lift the straight leg up and reach your top arm over your head. And release. And let's take one more. Let's just take child's pose. So knees are together. Release your hips towards your heels. And once again, you can either use a block to create height to release your forehead or fold your forearms over. Or maybe you don't need anything and just release your forehead to the mat. But whichever modification you're choosing, make sure you're comfortable in it. We're coming into the season of comfort and joy, actually. I'd like to think we could have comfort and joy all year, not just now. Inhale, curl your toes under. This is maybe where you might want to have your blocks in front of you again. Roll back onto the soles of your feet. Bring your blocks close to you. So the idea here now is just to hang out in Uttanasana. So your legs are mostly straight, but there's a little bit of release of relaxation in the knees. If your fingertips can relax on the floor, Okay, but if you need some extra height, these blocks are very useful for creating the height you need to allow 
your body, upper body, to rest in this inversion. Last week we talked about yoga for the brain. So not only are we now stretching our kidneys and adrenals, we're also sending an extra blood supply to the head, brain, face region. So truly relax your neck. Obviously, there's a little bit of stretch here for the hamstrings. Maybe it's a lot, depending on your hamstrings. Have a look at your feet for a moment because we're going to roll up to standing. Make sure they are underneath your hips so that your ankles, your knees, and your ischial, your um, anterior superior iliac spine, so that bone in the front of your hips, are going to be all aligned. And we're going to slowly roll up one vertebra at a time, keeping your chin tucked into your chest, keeping your shoulder blades far apart from one another. And then when your head comes up, let's bring the shoulders up to the ears, exhale, roll them back, interlock your fingers behind your back, and just broaden your chest here and create that lovely little curve in the lower lumbar area. Looking up, exhale and release. How are we doing for heat? Everybody okay? Okay, good. So come on up the front of your mats for sun salutations. Inhaling in place, exhale, hands in prayer. Step your feet apart. Arms up, reach up, look up, arc back. This arcing back compresses the kidneys and the adrenals. Inhale, then we stretch as we reach up. Exhale, forward fold. So this is all terribly rejuvenating for the kidneys and the adrenals and so much more. And then step your left leg back, drop the knee to the mat. Bring your hands onto your front right knee. Focus your gaze for balance. Look at the floor, eight feet in front of you or so, and then press through the heel of your back foot. That's gonna anchor you. Press through that heel, focus your gaze. Inhale, sweep the body up. Don't worry if you're wobbling, focus your gaze on the floor. Fingers are active, preparing them to bring them to the floor to support our weight in plank. Although taking the front foot back, if your wrists or shoulders aren't enjoying this, release your knees to the floor and just test how much weight can you take into your wrists and shoulders. If you're in plank, pull your bellies up towards your spine, reach the crown forward, pressing all 10 fingers into the mat. Really like, it's like you're pulling your rib cage together, giving yourself a yogic hug. Feel your core activated. And then release your knees, flatten the tops of your feet, leave your hands where they are, take your hips back towards your heels, stretching everything that you just worked. Shoulders will now be up around your ears, if not touching them. And then leaving your hands where they are, keep your head and shoulders and chest nice and low to the mat and slowly come forward, releasing your chest and your chin when you can onto the mat with your bum in the air. And slowly press everything out behind you. Lifting your chest up, drawing your fingers back to align with the edges of your shoulders, elbows into your side body, forearms reaching towards the floor, flattening the tops of your feet, 
Press your hips and pelvis into the floor. Roll an invisible alley with your nose. And then on an inhale, without using your hands, lift your head, neck, shoulders, and chest off the floor. Baby Cobra. Ever so nourishing for your kidneys and adrenals. So, of course, you're getting this every single time you do your sun salutations. But we're shining a spotlight on the benefits that yoga provides for these important glands. One more breath in. Exhale as you lower. Curl your toes under. You can press up onto your knees first or just lift your hips. Walk your feet a few inches forward. Make sure you're really pressing your fingers into your mat. And then press your sits bones towards your back wall, the back of your mat as you bend your knees. And then slowly press your heels towards the floor. Stretching your adrenals, your kidneys, lift your left leg up, look at your left hand and swing that foot as far forward as you can. Other leg forward, coming back into Uttanasana. Let your upper body hang, arms beside your ears. Pull your bellies in, engage your thighs by lifting up on your kneecaps, sweep your arms in front, reaching up to stand up, Feet apart for balance, look up and arc back. Inhale, bring your feet back together, lift up out of your waist. Exhale, forward fold. Bend your knees, inhale, sweep the arms out to the side. Hands together in prayer. Exhale, Anjali Mudra. One more round. Inhale. Exhale, hands in prayer. Step your feet apart, reach up, look up, arc back. Inhale, feet come back together. Lift up out of your waist, exhale, forward fold. Fingertips to the floor, please relax your neck, let your head hang. Step your right leg back, drop your knee to the mat, Bring your hands onto your front thigh and shoulders away from your ears. Focus your gaze. Lift your back knee off the floor. Press through that back heel. Keep your torso right over your hips. Inhale, sweep your arms up. And breathe. Pressing through your back heel. That's going to anchor your pose. So the straighter your back leg is, the more you're pressing through your back heel, the more stable and grounded you feel. Turn your hands forward. Spread your fingers apart. Bring your hands to the floor. Make sure the wrinkles in your wrists are aligned with the front of your mat. This is important for alignment when we're holding our body weight. Bringing your knees to the floor if you need to. Or spending just a part of your time in plank. And then bringing your knees to the floor when you've had enough. Knowing when we've had enough, whether it's yoga, food, Release your knees, flatten the tops of your feet, slowly draw your hips back towards your heels. If bending your knees is tough, then you can stay up a little bit higher. But if bending your knees isn't an issue, then feel the release in your wrists your shoulders, your spine, your lower back, as you stretch everything out. And then release your forearms and elbows to the floor and slowly come forward. 
releasing your chest and your chin, keeping your bum up. Now, for those of us who found this a very challenging posture, think back to the first time you ever did it and whether or not it's become a little bit easier. It's still awkward, no question about it, but it's enormously beneficial. Slide everything out behind you. Draw your fingertips to align with the edges of your shoulders. Elbows into your rib cage. Press your forearms down onto the floor. Flatten the tops of your feet. You may wish to take your feet wider apart and press your baby toes into the mat if you're thinking to go into the fuller expression of cobra. Roll the invisible alley with your nose. As you press your hips and pelvis into the floor, we'll all begin with baby cobra. We're not using our hands, we're using the muscles in our back, generating extra blood supply. When muscles are used, it requires blood supply. And then press the floor away from you if you wish to come up higher. Keeping shoulders away from ears, elbows tucked in, eyes can be opened or closed but rolled up towards Ajna Chakra. Inhaling one more time. Exhale, lengthen as you lower. And bring your feet back together had you separated them. Curl your toes under. Press with your hands to lift your upper body off the floor. And then walk your feet a few inches forward and bend your knees, press your belly onto your thighs, press your chest towards your knees, and then press your heels towards the floor. And breathe. So many benefits in Downward Facing Dog. And the slower we perform the asanas, the greater the opportunity for your body to achieve the benefits of these asanas. Lift your right leg up in the air. Look at your right hand. Swing that foot as far forward as possible. Other leg forward and let your upper body hang. Relax your neck. Pull your bellies in towards your lower back. Bring your arms beside your ears. Galvanize your thighs. Inhale, sweep the arms in front, reaching up. Feet apart for balance, look up, reach up, arc back. Inhale, bring your feet back together, lift up out of your waist. Exhale, fold from your hips. Please let the crown of your head hang. There's a tendency to hold our head, don't. Bend your knees, sweep the arms out to the side, bringing them up and overhead. Hands together, exhale, bring your palms to your heart center and release. And just before we come back down to our mats, I wanna try one balance pose. And if you feel like you wanna be closer to a wall or come off your mats to try it, so it's dancer pose, not a Rajasana. And it's quite a pretty pose, but it is demanding. So again, remember with um, balance pose, you have to wait for your own inner cue, not mine. So basically shift your weight to be on your left foot. And then bring your right knee up. Let's just start here. And for some of us, maybe this is all we're gonna do with dancer pose. Again, focus your gaze on the floor. Don't look at anything else and release and give your standing leg a shake out. And let's try this on the other side. So just draw the other knee up, focus your gaze. And give your legs a good shake out. Okay, so let's, so basically with Nataraj, we're gonna start again balancing on the left leg and you're gonna grab your right. Maybe I should turn around so you... It's just that I like to do this thing lengthwise on my mat. So you're holding on to your ankle, you're focusing your gaze on the floor. 
Just start there. Lift your left arm up. This may be enough. If you want to try kicking the right leg back, bending, and reaching the left arm forward. And come on out. Nice, everybody. And breathe. Give your legs a shake out. So now that you know what you're going to try, take your own time. Really focus and just become one with something that is not moving. So transfer your weight onto your right leg. And there is no shame, no harm in not being able to do this. Just do what you can. Some days balancing just isn't in the cards. And other days you could hold it what seems like forever. So with your left leg bent, reach your right arm up, focus your gaze, kick that left leg back, bending, Reaching with your right arm forward. Yeah, it's a very difficult, very challenging. Good for you for trying. Okay, just want to take a moment now, grab a block. We're going to do a, a little bit of a breathing exercise called Kapalabhati. It's purifying to the blood, it improves circulation, it lowers blood pressure, lots of benefits. Kapala means skull and body means shining. So shining skull, but I don't know about that. That's, I mean, I've said it for years. How, do we, how would I know if I have a shining skull? I'm more interested in my blood pressure. <laughs> I guess when I'm dead, somebody will maybe look at my skull and say, oh yeah, she has a shining skull. I wonder what she did. <laughs> so in Kapala body, the emphasis is on exhalation. And some of you have done this before. Okay, so sitting up, hopefully you can be comfortable sitting. If, if one leg is sore or you just want to sit with your legs out in front, just figured out we won't spend too long here basically um, when you pull your abs in actually I'm going to turn this music on when you pull your abs in it forces the exhalation so that's the focus the focus is on exhaling so you inhale and you see it's like a vigorous forceful exhalation once we exhale there's a vacuum your body will naturally inhale right as soon as there's a vacuum you're gonna you know the body so don't worry about the inhale it's more about the exhale and if your abdominal muscles aren't strong enough to force that exhalation you can use your hands if you like but i think most of you by now have strong enough abdominal muscles so inhaling together close your eyes and exhale normally and inhale and exhale and one more normal round inhaling and exhaling and this time we're going to inhale and we're going to forcefully exhale you're pulling your abs in And that will do. And just take a moment to breathe normally. And exhale. 
This also expands our lung capacity and activates the deepest areas of our lungs that actually don't get much action. So let's do this one more time. It can also increase our resistance um, to stress and help balance that parasympathetic and sympathetic nervous system. So flight or fight or rest and digest. So we're trying to balance these two things. We have to have both. So inhaling and exhaling and inhaling. You're doing this through your nose, by the way, and exhaling. And last inhale, and you can do this at your own rate and go for it. to put any socks on or a sweater or take a sip of water before you bring yourself into Shavasana. If you didn't get an iPad or you have something to cover your eyes with, um, this is helpful to bring your body into a state of relaxation where your body can now absorb the benefits of your actions. Closing your eyes. Separate the biting surfaces of the teeth. Relax your jaw. Relax your lips. Relax your neck. Let your shoulders go. Notice if you're holding any tension or tightness in your lower back. Let it go. Let your buttocks become soft. Let your thighs drape over your femur bones. Allow your calves to feel like jelly. Relax your ankles, your feet. If they aren't, turn your palms up in the open and receiving position. And let your bodies be soft and heavy. You might even apply your little Buddha smile to relax the muscles of your face. And imagine you're just floating. Feeling light. Feeling well. Feeling balanced. Feeling whole. complete, connected, to your source. Which is universal.
connected to everyone and everything. in a way that knows and understands the support of being connected. That we are all surrounded in the physical and non-physical realms of others who care and love us. It is a beautiful life. Inhaling the life force, long, full, and deep, your belly rising, diaphragm lengthening, and let it go. Long, full, deep, inhaling, and deep, exhaling. Inhaling and stretch your arms over behind your heads. Reach and stretch. Maybe wiggle your fingers and let it go. Inhale, stretch your arms skybound. Reach and stretch. Point feet far, flex and point. And drop your arms down by your sides. And when you're ready, roll over onto your side, maybe using your bottom arm as a pillow for a moment. Bending your knees. And when you're ready, using your top arm to press yourself back up into a seated position. And if you like, you can physically or silently chant OM together just once, inhaling. Om. Shanti, peace, namaste. Thanks very much, everybody, for coming out to share your practice today. Be sure to sip some water and love your kidneys. <laughs> and look at that blue sky. Aren't we lucky? Because the weather people love to tell you, 